1939, a great movie called Nanochka came out. It's a mix of funny, surprising, and sad moments that keep you interested. The story is about a serious Soviet envoy who goes to Paris and learns about capitalism and falls in love. There are lots of emotions in the movie like laughter, surprise, and sadness. As you watch, you'll laugh at clever jokes and be surprised by what happens next. But most importantly, you'll feel touched by the friendships and love in the story. When you think about the movie, you might wonder which character you like the most or if you have a special memory connected to it. Share your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Your experiences make the Nanochka fan community more interesting. Keep watching for more fun facts and remember to share your ideas. In Ernst Lubitsch's 1939 film Nanochka, viewers encounter a compelling narrative centered around the unlikely bond between a stern Russian advocate and a jovial Frenchman. Greta Garbo's portrayal of the titular character is particularly noteworthy, earning her an Oscar nomination for Best Actress. Alongside a stellar cast, including Melvin Douglas, Garbo's performance shines, anchoring the film with her stoic yet captivating presence. The movie skillfully navigates themes of friendship, romance, and cultural differences, offering both humor and poignant moments. As the story unfolds, the dynamic between Minochka and Douglas' character evolves, culminating in a heartwarming romance underscored by a poignant commentary on life in Russia versus freedom in other countries. Despite its slower pace and dated dialogue, Minochka delivers a satisfying viewing experience with a concise, satisfying conclusion. For those seeking a blend of wit, charm, and depth, this film is certainly worth a watch. In Italy, Greta Garbo's early films, such as Matahari and Grand Hotel, were dubbed by Francesca Bragiati, but her voice didn't resonate well with the Italian audience due to her American accent. Tina Latanzi eventually became Garbo's official Italian voice. However, in her later films like Ninochka, Andrina Pagnani provided the Italian dubbing. Even in the 1960s re-releases, Garbo's films underwent further dubbing, with Anna Proclamer lending her voice. The success of Ninochka, one of Garbo's most successful films, led MGM to assume her next should be a comedy too. However, Two-Faced Woman, which reunited Garbo with Melvin Douglas, flopped, leading Garbo to buy out her MGM contract and retire from acting. She remained reclusive until her death in 1990. Both Garbo and co-star Anna Claire had been involved with John Gilbert, adding depth to their scenes together. Their shared history with Gilbert subtly influenced their performances in Ninoshka. Gregory Gay, portraying the loyal aristocrat turned waiter Count Alexis Rakinen, was born in St. Petersburg, Russia. After a test screening of the film, an audience member's humorous reaction became legendary. They wrote on the preview card, I laughed so hard, I peed in my girlfriend's hand. The iconic tagline, Garbo laughs, preceded the screenplay. The film was crafted around the slogan. This phrase, referencing Greta Garbo's transition from silent films to talkies, evoked nostalgia among her fans, recalling the earlier slogan, Garbo talks. A well-liked movie by both Ernst Lubitsch and John Ford, the 1939 film holds a special spot in cinema history. Lubitsch really loved this movie, along with others like The Shop Around the Corner and Trouble in Paradise. Similarly, John Ford, a big name in the industry, considered it one of his personal favorites. Actors Gregory Gay, George Tobias, and Rolf Sedan later appeared in the musical remake Silk Stockings in different roles. The lasting appeal of the story and characters goes beyond generations, making it an important part of cinematic history. In 1939, a notable film directed by Ernst Lubitsch left its imprint on cinema history. Lubitsch, known for his skill, directed six Academy Award-nominated films, including one titled Ninochka. The movie featured a famous actress, Greta Garbo, who starred in three films selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. These films were considered significant for various reasons, showcasing Garbo's influence in the film world. During the film, a character named Volgenov delivered a memorable line, emphasizing the lasting nature of memories even in the face of censorship. Ninochka, without unnecessary additions, demonstrates Lubitsch's directing talent and Garbo's acting ability. Its inclusion in the National Film Registry highlights its cultural and historical importance, making it a noteworthy entry in cinematic history. In 1939, a movie made a big impact in Hollywood. George Tobias was part of it, not just in Ninochka, but also in its musical remake, Silk Stockings. Tobias also appeared in four Oscar Best Picture nominees Ninochka, Sergeant York, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and Mildred Pierce. Behind the scenes, director Ernst Lubitsch wasn't happy with the original script by Gottfried Reinhardt, NSN, Behrman. Lubitsch wanted changes. 
Billy Wilder, Charles Brackett, and Walter Rice rewrote it. Lubitsch also contributed a lot to the script, even though he didn't get credit. In movie making, Ninochka had its ups and downs. George Tobias, seen in both the 1939 original and its 1957 musical version, played his role. The movie itself was among the Oscar Best Picture nominees. Lubitsch, the force behind the scenes, reshaped the story with a rewritten script, making sure his vision came to life on screen. In cinematic history, Ninochka isn't just a movie, it's a team effort, bringing together talents to create a lasting legacy in Hollywood. In the 1939 film, some interesting details emerge. Greta Garbo, despite her reservations about comedic roles, found herself challenged by a particular scene she deemed vulgar the drunk scene. The cast diversity is notable, with only one member, Gregory Gay, ailing from Russia. Garbo, the lead, was Swedish, alongside an American, a German duo, and two Hungarian actors. The film faced strict censorship in the Soviet Union and its allied states, leading to its ban in those territories. These aspects shed light on the complexity and international dynamics surrounding the production, contributing to its intriguing history. In a tale echoing the diaspora of Russian nobility post-revolution, Ninochka finds its setting in Paris, although it was filmed in Hollywood. The film subtly interlaces the historical Franco-Russian connection, a motif shared with Dr. Zhivago. Interestingly, Arnold Schwarzenegger drew inspiration from Ninochka, specifically emulating Greta Garbo's performance, to shape his character in Red Heat under the direction of Walter Hill. Such cross-referencing underscores the enduring influence of classic cinema on subsequent generations of filmmakers. In a scene reminiscent of Stan Laurel's comedic exchange in Come Clean, Leon humorously requests coffee without cream. Despite popular belief, Greta Garbo dons makeup in the film, including false lashes. Director Ernst Lubitsch took the helm after George Cukor's departure for Gone with the Wind. As part of the deal, MGM committed to producing the shop around the corner afterward. The film, often remembered for its sharp wit and subtle charm, captivated audiences with its unique blend of romance and humor. Set against the backdrop of a changing world, it offered a glimpse into the complexities of human nature, drawing viewers into its enchanting narrative. The chemistry between the characters, portrayed with finesse by the talented ensemble cast, added depth and richness to the story, leaving a lasting impression on cinema goers for generations to come. Indeed, Ninochka remains a timeless classic, celebrated for its enduring appeal and cinematic brilliance. Despite appearing only briefly towards the end of the film, Bela Lugosi received fourth billing in the credits alongside Greta Garbo. The movie first aired on us a television in Los Angeles in November 1956 before reaching other cities like Seattle, Philadelphia, Chicago, and New York City over the following months. Interestingly, Billy Wilder revealed that Ernst Lubitsch made significant contributions to the script, prompting an attempt to include him in the screenplay credit, though the Writers Guild of America denied the request. It's fascinating how such a minor role for Lugosi garnered such prominent billing and how Lubitsch's influence on the script went unrecognized by the Guild. These behind-the-scenes details add layers to the production history of the film, shedding light on the collaborative nature of filmmaking during that era 